With this forum-funded project, I will bring the attention of my corner of the U.S. Academy to the southern border, joining pioneering scholars in broadening Mexicanist horizons to acknowledge South-South relationships and a larger picture of the border within Mexican letters. Border literature generally refers specifically to works produced along or portraying Mexico's expansive border with the United States. This conceptualization ignores the country's southern border with Guatemala and Belize, even though the spike in unaccompanied children apprehended at the United States' southwest border represents children who have traveled across Mexico from the northern triangle countries of El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras. Both the U.S. and Mexican governments are currently working to stem immigration from Central America through public information campaigns and increased detention center capacities on the part of the U.S. and Mexico's Programa Frontera Sur, or Southern Border Program, which involves increased immigration enforcement and higher apprehension rates at Mexico's southern border. Despite important contributions by authors and scholars focusing on the northern border, Ignoring Mexico's southern border perpetuates marginalization of Central American migrants and relegates South-South policing to the periphery. At the same time, authors who focus on this area themselves receive less critical attention from both U.S. and Mexican literature scholars. I've been working on an analysis of contemporary Mexican author Nadia Villafuerte's short stories. A woman from the South who writes about Nicaraguan, Salvadoran, Honduran, and Guatemalan migration to and through Mexico, Villafuerte portrays the stark, violent reality of life in the South. Her 2005 collection of short stories, Barcos in Houston, or Boats in Houston, examines what the Latin American working group calls Mexico's forgotten border, that is, its southern frontier. Revolving around the city of Tapachula, Chiapas, near Mexico's border with Guatemala, the stories portray the commodification of Central American bodies in the border town. For example, the story Turn Around features a woman who has tried to make it to the United States several times and embarks yet again on the journey from Guatemala, leaving her ethics behind. In another story, Cosmo Girl, the protagonist waits for her ride north in a bus station. Villafuerte writes, The bus station is like any bus station in the world. Locos, beggars, bandits taking advantage of an instant to outsmart the distracted, a coyote discreetly boarding with his three charges, hurried passengers packing sandwiches and fried food before climbing aboard. Human trafficking is then part of the landscape, as ordinary as a packed lunch. Focusing on spaces like massage parlors, cantinas, and nightclubs, the stories present misery as the norm, with stark realism. By representing rifts between people from Mexico and those from El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras, Villafuerte offers a perspective on migration that has long been ignored in both U.S. and Mexican letters, that of the South-South border. I've found that Villafuerte's portrayal of body commodification along Mexico's southern border reveals its status as a proxy border for the United States. After a long century of celebrated nationalist narratives, 21st century Mexican authors like Villafuerte offer a harsh, critical perspective of Mexico's other spaces. The collection Barcos in Houston is fascinating because, though published by a small state governmental press and with a small initial run, it documents a crisis that has only in recent years come to the national attention of the United States. Whereas the surge in Central American migration to the U.S. began around 2012, Barcos in Houston was published seven years earlier, in 2005, already a witness to the hierarchies that privilege the North and oppress the South. The multiple narrators, shocking realism, and dark humor provide a nuanced perspective on life on either side of the border, while pointing to the fact that the southern border is at the service of the northern border. Villafuerte's stories show us that South-South policing in border zones is inextricably linked to complicated relationships between residents and migrating people, between patriarchal systems of gender roles, and between faraway superpowers and local commerce. Though the stories take place on Mexico's southern border with Guatemala, and portray South-South policing of migration, the latent and persistent presence of the United States pushes readers to read the southern border with its violence, racism, and misogyny as a reflection or extension of the northern border with the U.S. A focus on the cultural products of these border zones allows for a deeper understanding of the human stories and real effects that policy and policing have on the lives of millions of people and can contribute to more humane proposals for safer borders for those on both sides of the walls, whether they are real or imaginary.